everybody G Bear here this is the new one this is the newest experiment anyway uh, what I've got inside here is a Harbor Freight battery I built this little box to hold it and drill some holes for my wiring to go through and excuse my hands been dirty I've been working hard on this anyway there's my uh, voltmeter connected here showing that I have right now um, 13.05 uh, volts in the battery and if we watch it a little while you'll see it click up to 13.06 that's because I uh, see it right there it just flashed on and off there it is 1306 1306 uh, it's going to keep kicking up because I've got a uh, 13 watt solar panel on it right now um, adding charge back to it because what this thing does is uh, I've got this controller on the front here and this is called a dump load controller and uh, that little solenoid switch looks like a Ford solenoid. Um, what that does is it's wired into the controller here and then it's connected to the battery terminals. So when there's um, a full charge in the battery this controller will send a signal to those two wires and cause the solenoid to close which in turn connects these two red wires those heavy red wires uh, one goes up to the tw uh, the positive pole of the battery and the other one is running down to the bottom of this barrel right here this blue barrel you see there's a, a red one and a black one going down in there okay that's a positive and a negative lead and those go down to a 300 watt 12 volt excuse me that plane's flying over I hope it didn't drown out too badly but uh, that's a 12 volt, 300 watt water heater element. So inside this barrel, which I set up here, and you can see this glass tube, but it's actually a plastic tube, it's flexible. And you see the water level is right here, just about to that point. I didn't fill it all the way because I wanted to be able to show you that, that that's so that I can tell how much water is in this tank at all times. Then it comes down here and I, I put a connection on the bottom of the barrel to where I came out and I teed off and I've got my um, ball valve there in the off position. And that comes over to a union. And then what the one beside it here is a cold water barrel and there's no water in this one at all right now. But what will happen is I have this T unit which will connect right in between there and then this line coming off of here will connect to this pump right here and this this is a 12 volt pressure activated pump and that's also connected to the battery but that has a switch on it and I haven't tied the, the switch in completely yet but this switch will mount on the box here so when you want water pressure you come over and flip the switch on and the pump will run and it'll come up to pressure as long as all of the faucets are closed, it'll stop at that point. Then when you open a faucet, you start letting water out, the pump will turn on and keep your pressure up so you always have pressure. Okay, so uh, this is going to connect to my shower and my outdoor um, sink. And uh, I will have hot water, hot and cold water actually, at both. And uh, Right now all I have is this little, you've seen me use this one in an experiment before, I have this little 13 watt uh, panel just barely catching the afternoon sun. Tomorrow I will have a 100 watt panel on there. And now I'm up to 1307 over here. See, it's climbing a little bit at a time, but when I put a 100 watt panel on there, that'll go back up fast. Now once that, re that voltage reaches probably 13.7 13.8 that's as high as a charge as the battery will accept and then the, the controller automatically will click on and and send the, the power instead of the, the power going into the battery it's going to send it through these wires and down to my water heater element and heat the water now if I want I can come over here and here's a manual button so if I press this manual button, you hear the click, you see the yellow light on right there, and that's showing that I'm putting power out through the, um, the red wires, and you see the, 
thing in there says six. Now what that's going to do is it's going to bring my battery power down. You see now we're down to 1218. And I watched it. It was running just like this. And, and that's got actually heating water right now. And uh, it doesn't go much below this range here. It stays right in there. So it's not going to kill my battery. Um, the battery will work and heat that element. But uh, I'm also putting a charge in there with the 13 watt panel right now with a 100 watt panel that 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 probably won't even drop down that low and as soon as I shut it off by coming around here and pressing the manual switch you hear the click the yellow light went out and now we're starting to climb right back up again it's immediately recharging that battery that's pretty cool if you ask me so I've got to set, the, set up the 100 uh, watt panel, I've got to go solder some wire connections on there and get my uh, diodes, my inline diode uh, on the positive line of the, the panel so it's all ready to connect for tomorrow. And then I'll let this thing run all day long while I'm out at work and we'll see how hot the water gets when I get back. I will uh, shoot some into a cup or whatever and I'll use my touchless uh, thermometer to take a reading and see see how hot the water got so just wanted to show you that and you can see my big inverter here this is uh, uh, my battery and I got experimental on there and but uh, this is running and um, I use that to run this table saw this is a 13 amp table saw and I cut up all the wood I needed to cut to do that uh, that project and this is my sink that's going to mount on the outer wall of my uh, shower. I've got the faucet and the sink in place. And we'll come around the other side here. You'll see the, uh, the lines in here and the, the drain and, and so forth and so on. And right now I've got the two lines connected with a T. Because I'm not going to put hot and cold water here now for a temporary run. I'm going to be using just the hot water running into here. Um, as a test, I wanted to see what kind of pressure I get at the faucet. And then once I get out there, I have this pipe right here. It's a, this is a three inch ABS. I drilled these uh, three quarter inch holes into the pipe all the way down and all around it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, sink, I'm gonna use my post holder and, and drill a hole in the ground. I'm gonna sink this pipe in there. Then I've got a reducer on here that reduces it to two inch. Then I've got my trap here. And my trap, I'll wait until I get out there so I know what size pipe I need to cut. And I'll cut a two inch pipe to go in between these two. And this little pipe here will be the vent that'll let air in so that the, the water can drain down. And I'm going to put some type of a, a cap on there with just pinholes in it so I don't have to worry about ants and bugs and all of that going down inside there um, they do they do sell a little unit uh, it's about 10 bucks I don't see why I need that out in the desert uh, the winds blowing all the time anyway so I'll just make some type of a cap on there that'll seal that off then over here you see these two pipes this is a, a two inch pipe and I got my box on there and my experimental labor label and I got the hole drilled already and these are going to be for my wind turbine now the, these two pipes go all the way back there into my garden. Uh, they're both 10 foot long. That'll put me 20 feet in the air and I've got a pipe in the ground out there that's sticking up about 6 inches. So I'll be about 21 feet at the top of the uh, wind turbine. And that should be plenty high to pick up some good wind and produce some good electricity. And we had wind earlier today and yesterday and my turbine was spinning and I did get electricity out of it. So that's a, a good thing and you're wondering how could that be when I got the poles here but what I did was I put a temporary pole up there and I, I mounted my wind turbine just to see if it works and it did so the winds not strong enough right now to be turning it but uh, it does work and it does output electricity at 400 watts so that and these six 100 watt panels here will be giving me 
uh, one kilowatt or 1,000 watts of charge power that'll go into my battery bank. And then I'll have a separate um, 100 watt panel that's going to go into this uh, solar water heater set. And, then, and that little single battery is all that's going to be needed that'll produce my hot water for me. Um, I will probably down the line hook up a wind turbine for nighttime, but I don't really think I need it because as you can see that right now the uh, the sun is half shaded across my panels but uh, I'm still just about to turn to 13 volts here there we go so it, it, it's bringing the battery right back up again even with minimal sunlight and that panel right there is not as efficient as those 100 watt panels that I'm using uh, those are uh, polycrystallines and uh, they are really super efficient even after the sun goes down below the horizon and there's still residual light I'm still picking up a charge in my charge controllers and uh, my charge controller over at that unit right now uh, on the big unit and my batteries is well over 13 volts so um, I've got a bulb that that burns beside it 24 7 and uh, now we're over to 13 volts here. So I think this is another success. Um, I'm happy with it. I will make permanent connections. I won't have these alligator clips on here tomorrow after I put the larger panel on here. And then uh, this thing will probably be clicking on and off all day long. It'll go click and, and heat water and then go click and shut off back and forth. That's it. Just wanted to let you know in on that and show you what I got going. Okay, G-Bear, time for a glass of wine tonight.